Hey everyone, welcome back to Racket Guys. Today we're going to be comparing two very similarly specced rackets in the Yonex EZO 98 and the Dunlop FX500 Tour. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to keep up with all of our latest content. Let's get started. The 2022 Yonex EZO 98 and the Dunlop FX500 Tour have nearly identical specs as well as some technology that is included in each that achieves some similar goals. Both the EZO 98 and the FX500 Tour have a 98 square inch head size, a 320 gram strung weight, 6 points headlight balance, and a 16 by 19 string pattern. Both are relatively stiff, with the EZO having a 65 RA and FX500 Tour having a 70 RA. Yonex updated the 2022 EZO 98 with a new shaft design for more stability and a thinner frame face for a softer response. The added 2G NAM speed provides enhanced feel, response, and power, while the vibration dampening mesh in the handle, along with the new frame design, keep the E-Zone 98 feeling comfortable, even while having an RA of 65. Dunlop has added what they call the Power Boost Groove. It's a groove engineered into the frame underneath the grommets that help to enlarge the sweet spot and create increased string movement for more spin, power, and comfort. The updated power boost frame geometry incorporates a more aerodynamic head shape with a wider throat for a faster feel and more stability. Internally, the FX500 Tour also includes flex touch resin and sonic core, which are a pair of technologies that work to reduce shock at impact, reduce vibrations, and to keep the FX500 Tour feeling nice and comfortable, even at a much higher stiffness rating of 70. Right away, the Dunlop felt very similar to the EZO 98 for me, uh, which really should not be a surprise considering just how close they are in spec. From the baseline, I found the EZO 98 a little bit easier to control. However, I found I got a little bit more spin and depth when I was hitting with the 500 Tour. With the 70RA, the Dunlop definitely played stiffer from the baseline than the EZO 98, and I found that I was getting that easier depth from the Dunlop. What really set the two apart for me though at the baseline was really the extra control that I had with the E-Zone. The extra depth and the spin from the Dunlop was great, but I still found that I was working harder to control the shape of the ball with the 500 Tour as opposed to the E-Zone that felt a little easier to control the shot overall. At net, I don't really favor one racket over the other. Both were really nice and stable and I felt quite comfortable moving forward with both rackets. The EZO 98 played a little softer here as well, and I felt like I had a little more touch and a little more feel than I had with the Dunlop. The extra stiffness of the Dunlop, on the other hand, made punching volleys deep really easy, and it almost felt like I was point and shoot with the Dunlop. On serve, again, I kind of liked the EZO just a little bit better. With both frames, I found it easy to hit all my spots on serves, as well as I was able to hit it with a variety of serves. Uh, something particular to note for me here is that I had a lot of success hitting my kick serve with both rackets, which for me is something that I kind of use as a benchmark for when I test a racket. Uh, if I can hit a kick serve well with a racket, then I know that it's something that I could probably use on the court. I do feel though that I was hitting a slightly heavier kick serve with the E-Zone, but it was really close and it's kind of hard to distinguish, so really not much to separate them there. Overall, I think both frames are great players' frames, and I would easily recommend both for intermediate to advanced players. After hitting with the Yonex EZO 98 and the Dunlop FX500 Tour, I noticed that even though these frames are very similar in spec, they play very differently. On my ground strokes is where I noticed this the most. When hitting both my forehand and backhands with the Dunlop, I could really feel the lack of forgiveness that this frame has. With a flex of 70, anything that was not quite in the sweet spot, I could really feel the vibration travel up through the frame. While the EZO 98 with a stiffness rating of 65 was definitely more forgiving on any off-centered shots. Another thing that surprised me about these two frames was that even though the Dunlop was higher in flex than the EZO 98, the Onyx felt more stable when hitting from the baseline. It was almost most noticeable on my back end slice where I would really feel the FX500 flex and then get pushed around a little bit more than the EZO 98 did. But when it came to serves, both these frames performed equally well for me. They offer great power with little to no effort when I was looking to hit flatter first serves, but on second serves, the headlight balance really allowed me to generate the racket head speed I needed to get great kick and neck clearance on my second serve. 
but after hitting with both the Dunlop FX500 and the Yonex EZ98, I'm definitely going to have to go with the EZ98 over the FX500 as it offers me a more forgiving feeling string bed, felt softer on my arm, but was still able to provide me with the crisp response I look for in a frame. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about either the Yonex EZ98 or the Dunlop FX500 Tour, or if you have any rackets that you'd like to see us review in the future, let us know down in the comments below. As always, the EZ98 and FX500 Tour are both available online at racketguys.com. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.